Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you how you can specify a free growth model in the M plus software. Here free, not meaning one that is without cost. You still have to buy the software, but one where the growth curves are allowed to take on values that are not constrained by, for example, a linear or quadratic growth function. In case you're new to this channel, on this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials often related to structural equation modeling and the M plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also hit the like button in case you like this video. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the M plus syntax for a latent growth curve model with an unspecified growth function. Now, what you can see here is actually not that, but what you can see here is a standard linear growth model specification in M+. You can see here this is uh, a minimal uh, syntax specification, so to say the bare minimum that you need uh, in M+, in order to specify a growth curve model, M+, needs to know where your data set is located and what it is called. So if you give the file name and then if you save your syntax file in the same folder in which you have your data file and if this is an individual data file then M plus will automatically find it and process it correctly. Next what you also need is you need to specify the names of the variables in that data set in the correct order. So you can see here I have four variables y1 through y4 and those represent those repeated measurements of a single outcome variable or a single um, scale or scale score or other variable that I want to analyze here with a latent growth curve model. And then the last thing that you need um, at least is a model statement that specifies your growth factors. And so here I have the intercept factor labeled as inter C and the slope factor labeled as slope. And then you use this a vertical bar symbol here in M plus to indicate that this is a model with random slopes. So it's a random intercept and random slope model. And then M plus will automatically know that this is a growth curve model. So what you normally do when you specify a linear growth model in M plus is you set the loadings according to a linear function here, assuming that the time intervals between the variables are the same respectively. And so then the loadings would be fixed to zero, one, two, and three on the slope factor to um, model linear growth. Now, sometimes what we find in practice is that a linear growth curve model is too simplistic and that it doesn't fit because change over time is not a straight line for all people in the data set. And then what we often try is a quadratic growth function next. And then maybe that also doesn't fit so well because the curves are not generally U-shaped or approximately U-shaped. And so then one other thing that you can try is you can try a model in which you do not restrict the growth function to be linear or quadratic, but to just simply estimate it really from the data. And that's what I want to show you here in this video, how to do this. And it's really simple. You just simply delete the at three and the at two that would make this a linear growth curve model in order to estimate those slope factor loadings freely in M plus. And then M plus will give you estimates of those loadings that need not be in line with a linear function. So they need not be two and three, they can be whatever they want to be, so to say, and they're being estimated freely from the data. So that's what it is. And so you can do this with um, a latent growth curve model with four or more time points. You can estimate those loadings from the data. And then you have to so say a free growth model, or uh, you could say a growth curve model with an unspecified growth function where there's not a specific constraint on the functional form of change over time that is imposed on everybody in the data, which is often um, not realistic to begin with, because why should everybody show a straight line growth or a quadratic growth function? So let's take a look and see what 
uh, M plus gives us when we run this model. The model fit looks good. The chi-square test of model fit here is non-significant. It's not surprising in this case because I simulated the data, so that's what I like to do, so my models fit well. In practice, models don't always fit so well, but you might find that such a model with a free growth function often will fit better than a linear model, at least, so it's not totally unrealistic, my example here. Now let's take a look at the model results. You can see that M, M plus constrains the loadings on the intercept factor automatically. So you can see here all those intercept factor loadings are constrained to one. There's not a standard error and um, therefore also no test statistic or p-value because these loadings are all fixed as they would be in a linear growth model or in a quadratic growth model also. The intercept factor loadings are always constrained to one. And then the slope factor loadings are not constrained other than the first two. So the first one for time one is set to zero because there hasn't been any growth yet at time one. So therefore that loading is zero. And then the loading at time two is set to one so that this factor can also be identified. So that identifies this factor as a latent change score factor, so to say, the indicating change between time one and time two. So that makes the slope factor really a latent change score variable, so to say, or a latent um, change factor, a latent difference score variable, you could say, between time one and time two. And then the other loadings are freely estimated. You can see this from the fact that, um, first of all, the numbers are crooked. So um, they're not like even numbers. And also these estimates have a standard error. For example, the loading for time three is 1.72 with a standard error of 0.238 and a test statistic uh, or Z statistic of 7.219. So this loading you can see is different from zero. It's statistically significant and it's not exactly two. It's close to two. So that's what we would have specified in a linear growth curve model. So this loading may not be statistically different from two. Um, you can see the, the loading at time four is estimated to be 2.296 with a standard error of 0.421. And again, that loading is not three, which it would be in a linear growth curve model. So it's a little bit less. So it could be that here the growth function is not increasing any more past the third time point in general. So it, it could be that the curve flattens out. And that may be indicated by the fact that the last loading is not so close to three. Now, again, we haven't tested here that it's significantly different from three. So we should also fit a linear growth curve model to see if that fits. And if the linear model fits, then maybe that's um, better and that makes sense because it's more parsimonious. But let's assume for now that the linear model here doesn't fit and that this is significantly different from a loading of three, then this would indicate that the growth function here is a little bit flatter over time. It flattens out and that is often the case in practice that, for example, intervention initially maybe works really well and causes a lot of change, but then the effect kind of wears out a little bit or um, is not as great anymore. And so the whole curve gets a little bit flatter, uh, gets to be a little bit flatter over time. And so this can be modeled, for example, by freely estimating those factor loadings. The other parameters that you get are um, the same as what you would get with, for example, a linear growth curve model. You also get the covariance between intercept and slope factor in the standardized solution. Uh, STD, Y, X, and M plus, this would be the correlation. If you looked at this fully standardized solution, you also get the means of the intercept and slope factors. You can see that there has been significant change on average between time one and time two because the slope factor has a mean of two and that two um, mean 
is significant. It has a Z statistic of 4.011, and that's statistically significant at the 0.05 level. So there's significant mean change, a significant increase in the means here from time one to time two. And then, of course, over time, that effect is different because the loadings here are not in line with a linear model. And so this doesn't, this means that change will be different from um, average change will be different from time two to time three, for example. You'd have to figure this out um, manually, which is something that I'm not going to go into the details here. But if you uh, have my book, Longitudinal Structural Equation Modeling with M Plus, uh, then in that book I describe how that's done, how you can assess mean change also then for um, other time periods for, uh, for example, between time, um, time two and time three. It can also be computed from, uh, from those estimates. And you get the variances of the growth factors um, here at the bottom. So you can take a look at whether there are individual differences at time one and also whether there are individual differences in change over time by looking at the slope factor variance and you get the residual variances that indicate the residual variance in the indicators that is not accounted for by the growth factors and that is for example due to random measurement error or other sources of variance. I hope you like this video and maybe it helps you with your own growth analyses in case a linear growth model doesn't fit so well and or a quadratic growth model doesn't fit so well. If you like this video, then please hit the like button. Also check out the description for additional free re resources and I'll see you next time.